What up y'all? Today's video we are going to talk about how you can be a better customer. A lot of times people travel and they do things and they just really aren't aware that what they're doing is like trash. You know what I'm saying? I just want to go really into detail with y'all about the do's and don'ts of traveling and most of the things from this video are going to encompass everything that goes on while you're either boarding or on the actual aircraft. And then the other part will really be just some things that I want to address that I feel aren't really like do this or don't do this type of thing but they're just things that I feel that need to be addressed on a general level. So I like to start with the negatives and end on a positive note so we're gonna talk about all the things you should not be doing first. On my don't list to get started, number one, do not assume that it is okay to switch your seat. You always need to ask to switch your seat. For one of a few reasons, when seats are planned out, especially with like standby passengers or if you just wanna sit together, never, ever, ever assume that you can just do that on your own. Now there's one thing that is called weight and balance. Sometimes when you have a flight that is empty, they will change your seat for weight and balance purposes. But it's kinda one of those things where it's like, if you have a scale and let's say on this scale you have 10 pounds and on this scale you have 15 pounds you might take some off of the 15 pound side just because you want to even that scale up so that when it's time for you to move this scale it won't be uneven and it won't fall over and the things that are on it won't fall off because everything is balanced flights work the exact same way so sometimes when there is a lot of luggage on the plane and there aren't many passengers they will strategically move passengers to let level out the weight of the plane and it also works in the opposite way where if there are more passengers than there are luggage to balance out the plane they will add something that is called ballast. Ballast is these 25 pound slabs of weight. Ballast can look different depending on what airline you are on and what airport you're at but essentially it's a 25 pound weight. Some ballasts come in 50 pounds depending on how many passengers there are they guesstimate the amount of weight. So in the winter time they know that people weigh a little bit more they account for that fluctuation in weight so they guesstimate at the maximum if you guesstimate at the right amount that just gives you a little more wiggle room and then the second thing is customer courtesy if I am traveling and I notice that I get my boarding pass and I see that my friend and I are not seated together that is a simple fix prior to boarding that is something that can be taken care of with the gate agent all you would need to do is go to the gate agent and say hey a friend and I are traveling together if it's possible could you seat us together they will ask you for your boarding pass that you already have they will check your seat numbers and then they will move you I just think that it's really inconsiderate to get on a plane and be like oh me and my friend we wanted to sit together and you or your friend is sitting in my seat at that point it's just like now I'm a little more inclined to just honestly be kind of sort of anal about it because it's like I don't care that y'all are traveling together I wanted a window seat I paid for a window window seat I picked a window seat that's what I wanted I don't care that you and your friend are traveling together and you surely should not have asserted yourself to just up and change your seat no it does not work like that so if you are traveling with a friend or a family member and you would like to be seated together that is something that you address with the gate agent prior to and they can make those adjustments for you the only other person that you will be able to talk to about changing your seat assignment would be a flight attendant they're also really good about that sometimes people want to change their seats because this person next to me is making me really uncomfortable or a simple you know are there any aisle seats that are available some people are particular and they might notice you know hey is it possible for me to change my seat or something like that but if you're already aboard the aircraft your source of contact would be the flight attendant and they can go ahead and take care of that for you which leads me to my second point on the don't list if you are not in the window seat you do not have window say that is my pet peeve I cannot stand it it's like if I'm in the window seat it's because I picked the window seat and you excuse me could you let your shade down I'm trying to sleep no I'm not letting the shade down because I like to look out the window when I'm flying that calms me it puts me in a good space for where I'm about to be at now depending on who it is and how they act and what I feel like Maybe I'll let the window shade down just because they asked me really nicely or something like that. But some people be really just getting beside themselves, reaching over me and letting the window shade down. So then you know what I'm finna do? 
flick and I'ma stare at you. Because if you're not in the window seat, you do not get a window say. Don't do that. Now while we talking about sitting in the seat, do not put your feet on the seat for a number of reasons. Number one, that shit is unsanitary. You're disgusting. Everywhere your shoes been, everywhere your feet been, and some people be taking they some people be taking their socks and their shoes off. Hunty, first of all, put them bad boys back in your shoes. And second of all, get your feet off of these people's furniture. To me, that's just like, why you don't have no home training? Why you don't have no tact? Why you don't have no class? Why would you put your feet on somebody's chair? Some of y'all be milking it. I know y'all see the pictures of like people putting their feet through the chair on the armrest of the person who's in the row in front of them. Or like, your feet on the window. And I look to the side and I'm seeing and toes wiggling and then the toenails be dirty and like please do not do that keep y'all feet off of the furniture and please be courteous of your kneecaps being in the back of someone's seat like don't do that don't do that sit in your seat and do it the right way i'm not understanding why we still haven't had this conversation but here we are do not be that person that just is completely unsanitary speaking of unsanitary don't touch my cup during in-flight service especially touching my cup like this why would you put all five of your fingertips over the brim of my cup? Why would you do that? Now I don't even want my drink no more. Which is also why when they come around, can I have whatever it is, no ice, no cup. I will clean my own can off. To me, that's just like so disgusting. I'm kind of a germaphobe. If y'all haven't already figured that out, do not put your hand on other people's cups. Like if you're gonna assist in passing over a cup, you need to grab the cup by the bottom. If this my cup, right, why I'ma hand you a cup like this and you gotta put your mouth on this part and they don't give y'all straws don't do that grab the cup pass it it's that simple before we even get on the plane this is something that i just have to address do not argue with the gate agent that's like the dumbest thing you could do me personally i'm not a gate agent people who are gate agents i commend them they have the most patience that i've ever seen and it's as if when people travel they just lose their brain cells for some reason like they be coming up with questions that are literal common sense to me. my ticket says gate g9 this is g7 where's g9 because that says G5, and that says G11, and where is G9? Or they missed a flight, or standby passengers are that's like really aggressive, they wanna go back and forth, well why can't you just do this? Why? You do not argue with a gate agent, because I'ma tell y'all right now, some of y'all be wildin', <laughs> you be wildin'. If it was up to me, like, I'm just gonna not let you get on this flight. Flight attendants have the power, authority, and ability to make sure that you don't get on a flight. If you're an unruly customer, they can call police to escort you out. If I was a gate agent, a lot of people probably wouldn't like me because I just have a very low tolerance for ignorance and for people who are rude. But, you know, I guess gate agents are trying to do it. They deal with it. Some of them do it graciously. I think that I would have to be like shown. Show me. I need to see. Because I don't like when people are rude. And I just think that's just, it just shows that you have really not been anywhere. Please refrain from arguing with gate agents being rude to them. If they give you a directive, follow it. Gate agents are literally the gatekeepers to your flight. Those are the people you absolutely want to be nice to. That goes for flight attendants as well. They can put you off. Pilots, they can put you off. If you're creating an unsafe environment, a hostile environment, an aggressive environment nobody want to deal with that on their flight you know what they're gonna say have a good day find this person's bag get it to them they have to leave do not argue with flight attendants do not argue with gate agents do not argue with pilots they're people just like you and nobody wants to deal with that while they at work you want to get to where you're going you want to have a good time some people may not always be traveling for leisure but why complicate your trip when you don't have to which leads me to my next piece just treat people how you want to be treated. Don't be an a-hole, okay? These last two things on my don't list, they really be blowing me, and I'm sorry, not sorry. Do not play with the air blower. Only deal with your air. Don't do that. That is so annoying. First of all, I don't like cold environments for real like that anyway. And somebody who's next to me who just absolutely has to have the air on, have the air only on you. They want to turn on all three blowers, and now everybody in the whole row got to be cold, bottle up, put a jacket.
jacket on, put a hat on, scarf on. Like, no. It go back to the window. If you not in the window seat, you don't get no window say. You don't get no say over nobody else's blower if you in the alley. <laughs> I mean, y'all really rhyme, but y'all get what I'm saying. Like, you can only control your blower. Don't be messing with other people's blowers, other people like, don't do that. Do not. This is for you and your child. Make a mess with your snacks. It just shows that you don't have control over your children. Do not allow your children to put snacks on the floor, step all over them, crunch them up, throwing them. No, no. Do not travel with a child if your child does not have airline etiquette. That goes for how they act when they on the plane, they volume, the stuff they do during the flight. Like don't travel with your child if your child does not have any home training on how to be a passenger, even as a child. I very much so am a strong believer in the fact that children will do what you allow them to do. What you do and what you instill in them at home carries over into their behavior into so many other things. It's just not a good look. I get that some people are like, well, I don't care and da 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 but like, if you're gonna travel with a child, you need to teach them from a young age how to behave, what is appropriate, and what is not. My last and final thing. Do not be one of them couples on planes trying to do freaky stuff. Stop doing that. You had all this time before you got to the airport. Once you got to the airport, you could you could have figured out something, but you wait till you get on a plane. I'm sorry, but if you next to me doing all that type of stuff, I'm snake. Ching. Excuse me, are y'all really finna? I'm gonna embarrass you. I'm just gonna put you right on front street because it's just like, that's just so tacky, it's so classless, it's so like, it's poor. Stop doing that, don't do that. And now on a more positive note, Nope. We're gonna talk about things you should do. Number one, you should be patient and you should be courteous at all times. Sometimes things can go wrong and although we can be frustrated, it's just best to be patient and to be courteous because sometimes when you do, it works out in your favor. Depending on the situation, airlines will offer things like travel vouchers, free upgrades to first class sometimes. That's very rare, but it does happen. Sometimes when there is like a flight delay, there ends up being another flight that comes in early and then you're able to switch to another flight that has like more space. Honestly, that's one of my favorite things is like, oh, my flight delay, oh, this flight was so full. But then now, once the delay is over with the first flight, the second flight that's going to that same destination, they're able to split those passengers and it works out for everybody because that take a load off of the gate agents who were already had this full flight. But it also gives the passengers like more space. You have more room in your row. Ugh, it just works out. So just always be patient and always be courteous because you never know what that could turn into for you. You do want to always follow directions. If they give you directions, please just follow them. If you have questions, ask them. Don't be aggressive. Don't have an attitude. Try to make sure that you're always following directions. You're always paying attention and doing as you are at. Now this is my favorite. You do want to act like you've been somewhere before. Now that don't mean you gotta be bougie, but I mean sometimes you could just <coughs> peasants acting like you've never been somewhere before. Have some class. I mean you don't have to be that bougie with it, but like this is not your first rodeo. You want to know how to always comfort your child when you are traveling. Sometimes kids have bad days, they have temper tantrums, or whatever the case may be. Flying can be kind of intimidating for kids. I know that a lot of parents when their children are just starting out, especially small babies and things of that nature, noise canceling headphones or some type of hearing protection that will allow the pressure of the air cabin. That you know, they tell you like, oh, chew gum, your ears will pop, or things of that nature. But for children, it could be something that's scary. It could be intimidating for them. So you always want to make sure that you know how to comfort and console your child when they're first starting off flying or even in moments where they're upset. You want to watch your volume while you're on the phone. Sometimes it can be one of those things where it's just like, oh, I'm loud. But you just kind of want to be courteous of other people when you're on the phone. Realize that everybody doesn't want to hear your conversation. Although it may be great, it may be a juicy story. But everybody doesn't want to hear your conversation. So please just be courteous and make sure that you watch your volume when you are on the phone. Which leads me then to my next point. Please understand that not everyone wants to be social. Many people aren't malicious in their intent to just spark small talk or conversation or things like that when they're flying 
flying but everyone again may not be flying for leisure so you do want to just make sure that you're being courteous not too abrasive not too many questions for some people that could just trigger them you never know what people have going on please just understand that not everyone wants to be social especially with a stranger when the plane parks sit down for real if you have been keeping up with my travel segment I did explain what's really going on when the plane is parked and that time of when people are just standing up like you want to sit down just one more time sit down you're not going to be in a position where standing up is going to help you get off of the plane faster it's really not and i personally like just to be petty i know it's kind of bad i'm one of those people who will stand up in the aisle and take my slow sweet time taking my bag from here i'm gonna put my jacket on i'm gonna rearrange my purse i'm gonna let the people in the rows in front of me go ahead no no you go you go like i'm one that I'm very much so one of those people because it's just like a really really big pet peeve I don't know why it bothers me so much but it just does you can't go anywhere like sit down you're clogging the aisles I hate fire hazards so that's probably why but you just want to make sure that when that plane park you just keep it on mm -mm, right in the seat you also want to be a courteous sleeper please be a courteous sleeper like it's just like when you on the plane like try to sleep like this or like this on your tray table. You do want to be a courteous sleeper because when people be next to you and they just be snoring and they be leaning on you, it's like, get up. And then my last two things, wash your hands and stay out of your nose, please. Like those are the two things that just make my skin crawl. Like people who just sit there and just be picking their nose and then they flick it. They don't wipe it on a napkin. They don't hand sanitize nothing. And they just be digging for gold. Like, bruh. Wash your hands. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace out.